Coming back to the landing gear cover, you know, the more I looked at this piece, the more it looked like the afterthought that it was, is, and it just looked like, well, it just looked awful. So it's going in the round file and I'm gonna do something different. One reason that this, besides looking bad, it's not gonna work is that I want to do also the fairing from the landing gear to the fuselage. And it wouldn't have worked very well with this piece. So I needed to have something that this flange on the fairing, it kind of, it rounds out and it's about half an inch all the way around. So I needed something that I could do that. And so I'm laying up here or, or setting up for a fire, another fiberglass part. And then after I fiberglass this piece, then I'll come back in and I'll make two separate fairings. And these fairings should be removable so they won't be attached to this part. This fiberglass piece, right now my plan is to have it uh, held in place with the same four bolts that hold the landing gear in place. One of the problems I'm going to have, or the biggest problem I guess I'm going to have, is when this wing comes off, it raises up, which means this area right here raises up. It's not much, only maybe eighth of an inch, but it might be just enough to where this is going to be a problem. I don't know. I'm only going to use the fiberglass I'm going to use is two layers of six ounce cloth and a two ounce layer cloth. Same that I did with the cowl. And that'll give me a little bit of flexibility. And I'm hoping that's gonna be enough where this isn't gonna be a problem. Uh, I guess if, if, uh, if it is a problem, I can always cut it back some, but I can't cut it back too much because I need to have this landing gear Fuselage fairing come out to right about here. I don't know if you said a little tick mark, but right about here. So that's what I'm working with. Let me continue uh, shaping. I got to add some filler, do some more shaping, and then we'll come back. I finished up the foam plug, I rounded over the front and rounded over the back as well. I put some. Uh, spackling compound on it, smoothed it all out pretty well. And then with my usual fiberglass layups, I put down some clear packing tape over the whole thing. And then I gave it a very thin coat of petroleum jelly. And I'm going to use three layers of the six ounce fiberglass for this one. This part does sit on the bottom and it typically gets handled, you know, when you're moving your model around. So there's probably going to be a little bit of pressure on this fairing. It's not going to have any sort of backing to it. I'm going to remove the blue foam once this thing is laid up. So it needs to be a little bit stiffer. So I'm going to use three layers of the six ounce and I'm going to use one layer of the two ounce. That nice fine weave, two ounce, should make finishing much easier. So the first layer I have down, I smoothed it onto the form. Again, that, fire, that, that petroleum gel does a really nice job of holding that first layer in place. I had to trim the ears here a little bit for the uh, landing gear. I'm not gonna be too concerned about the corners here and here as well, because the uh, landing gear to fiberglass fairing is going to cover this area right here so it's not really critical that this be you know perfect so i'm not going to spend um i'm not going to be too worried about that all right so it's time to go ahead and mix up some epoxy and get this thing laid up i'm using a new epoxy for me it's a 20 minute pot life or 20 minute epoxy i haven't had a chance to use it yet I don't really need a fast working time epoxy right now, but I wanted to try it, see how it worked. And this being a small part, um, I think it should work okay. I'm gonna find out. I'm still gonna try to work a little bit quickly with it if I can, because it says it's a 20 minute epoxy, but I'm not really sure. I've never used it. So I better work quickly.
I always try to pull up the excess resin from a previous layer up into a new layer prior to adding more epoxy. This helps to keep the weight low by keeping the amount of epoxy used low. Remember the idea behind peel ply is to remove as much excess resin as possible. This used to be done with using toilet paper or paper towels, but the peel ply does a much better job of removing that excess resin. After the resin is cured and you remove the peel ply, the surface of the fiberglass will be very nice, roughly equal to about 600 grit sandpaper, and it will require minimal finishing before you can apply paint. Old credit cards and old driver's licenses do a great job in helping to squeeze out the excess resin. Next morning, time to pull the peel ply. The 20-minute uh, epoxy worked pretty well. I don't think I can do a part really bigger than this because it started to gel up pretty good at about 15-20 minutes. So that will be good for smaller parts. Um, Actually, you know, for something like this, if you could lay up a part, say in the early morning, say eight, nine o'clock in the morning, you could probably pull the pill ply or, uh, you know, continue on with the part later in the afternoon. That's kind of nice. As you can see, the part is ready to pop off on its own. It should just pop right off. Very nice. Oh yeah. Very nice. All right, let's trim this up. Remove the clear packing tape. Well, almost all the clear packing tape. You know, the downside to that clear packing tape is that the adhesive is really aggressive. And sometimes, most of it peels away, 90% of it peels away, especially in this area. But where there is primer, it likes to really get stuck down. And I don't mind it peeling the, uh, the primer off here. That's, no, that's okay. But there's a little strip right here. You might be able to see where it's shiny. That has become very tenacious and hard to get off. I'm going to have to remove the um, foam and then I think I might be able to get that piece off. But, you know, I like the clear packing tape. It works, but that is a downside to it. It can be tough to get off. It's thin, so it tears easily. I find that uh, using a spatula to try to get up underneath it helps. Um, you can use a hobby knife or, you know, something like that, but you, that runs the risk of damaging on the surface. And speaking of that, this piece from the side, the fairing, the uh, wing to fuselage fairing, I actually tore it off. Now, I think it'll be okay. Um, I, I can glue it back in and it actually glues to the uh, belly pan. So I think it'll be okay. Glue it in, putty it in, and it'll look fine. But this just kind of shows you the, um, that clear packing tape. It's good as a barrier, but you do have to be careful when it comes time to re uh, remove it. I try not to burnish it down on areas that are not having the uh, fiberglass form. So these series, I just kind of put it down, you know, lightly. I think it's something to do with the primer. 
I think the lacquer primer and the adhesive, they kind of interact and I don't know, that's kind of what it seems like. Anyway, so I ended up trimming the uh, part and it fits really nice. I did round over the front corners here a little more than I wanted to. I can't decide whether to try to square those back off again. It's a nice fit with the cowl. So, I don't know, I may just leave it. So, now the next thing to do is I want to make a mount for this. Let's call this the gear cover. And what I want to do is I want to use the four existing bolts that are used to bolt down the landing gear. And I want to have sort of a uh, former going across this gear cover and then have a kind of like a bridge type thing so that the bolts can go through the top, go through the bridge, and then they go through the landing gear and ultimately everything gets mounted to the fuselage. And that I think would be the simplest way to do it. Cleaned up all the foam and I was able to get this last little bit of tape off. Um, in this case, it was the easiest just to kind of rub it off like that. My plan to use the uh, foam as a template for these formers didn't work. So I had to do it the old fashioned way, I guess you'd call it, and just trial and error. Fit them, see what needed to be sanded, sand the trial, sand, trial, sand until I finally got it. And then I added a couple of gussets on each side. Pretty stuff, stiff. And so now it fits pretty well. The one thing I'm a little disappointed in, I had actually had recessed the sides of the foam a little bit trying to get this fiberglass so that it would be right flush against the side of the fuselage. But that didn't work. That didn't happen. They actually stick out a little bit. So I'm not sure yet how I'm going to deal with that. Um, but for now, what I need to do is get my bolts out and uh, get a piece. So I think I'm going to use G10 into here and see if I can uh, get this whole thing to mount with just using these four bolts. So I had to come up with a new way of um, finding the center in the G10. So basically I ended up using a light which shines through, does a real nice job of going through the G10, just as long as it's uh, the light is straight on with the hole. And this T-nut is right up against a gusset, so it's making it a little bit difficult, but I think right about there. Then I just use this drill and just kind of mark the hole. I don't drill all the way through, just kind of mark the hole. All right, I think that's going to work nicely. We'll show you one of the good holes. The bolts are three and a half millimeter diameter bolts. So the holes I drilled, I drilled four millimeter holes to try to give myself a little bit of play. And then I reinstalled the G10 and these two bolts fit well. These two bolts, I needed to elongate the holes a little bit. I needed to elongate them a little more forward. And then when I attached the cover, well, then this one ended up needing to be a little, a little bit elongated more towards the rear. But now they fit well. I will end up using washers, and so the elongated holes won't be a problem. And so then the cover, it fits well also. Now the next step here is to remove my bolts and tack glue in the G10 to the balsa formers. But before I do that, I tried uh, removing the wing. I knew from the very beginning that this back edge was gonna be a problem because you have to 
raise the wing up to get it out. Sure enough, as I tried to raise the wing, the wing tried to push up this cover. So I'm going to have to end up trimming the back. Uh, I'm not sure yet how much. I'll get this G10 glued in permanently to the boss of formers and then attack the uh, back of the cover. I snugged up all four bolts, not tight, just snug, pulling the G10 flush with the landing gear. And I'm gonna end up doing these bolts one at a time. I'll remove one bolt, uh, give it a shot of thin CA through the hole, trying to get the CA just between the G10 and the balsa former. And this actually will be, the formers are actually here and on the back side. And so I'm just going to show you one bolt. The rest of them will be the same. The trick here now will be to not get any CA in the bolt hole because I definitely don't want to be gluing the G10 to the landing gear. truth all four bolts have been removed i've not done this prior to this this uh clip so we're going to see together if i did this right all right now i need to go in and add some more ca to the inside and i don't have room for gussets because the landing gear comes up right up against the former. So I'll just have CA. The cover comes in right at 30 grams. A 20 gram weight, 10 grams. So it comes in just right at 30 grams. The cover without the G10 was 17 grams, so it's 13 grams for the G10. And that's just slightly over an ounce. One ounce is 28.35 grams, so we're looking at just slightly over an ounce for this cover. And the good news, it's Ford of the CG, so that doesn't hurt me any. Because the G10 is so heavy, my plan is to cut out the middle of it. I haven't done it yet, but that is my intention. Maybe I can show you the results in the next video. I attached the cow just to make sure there wasn't any interference. And I have a nice small gap. So that works well. I don't think I'm getting much work done today because someone has decided to take a nap right where I need to stand. But I've made a decision about the gear cover, and that is to not make a decision about the gear cover, at least not right at the moment. What I'll do is I'll put this all back on, and then I'm going to go ahead and start working on the gear to fuselage fairings right here on both sides. And that's going to take me a few days. And depending on how these turn out, that will help guide my decision on what to do about the cover.